I think he, I know he did try at one time and he took it off him and threw it at the mechanic during practice. I met a gypsy. Uh, the Marvin thing, that the clip we put up on YouTube and they were like, this didn't age well. I'm like, dude, what did you listen to? This is aging like f fine wine yes he literally this is like the nuts and bolts of what ryan hughes said about marvin right he said until he gets rid of his neck brace he won't be able to get in the correct positions to go fast enough to win a race marvin muscan took Ryan. off his neck brace and went fast enough to win a race now coincidence you be the judge uh, but holy I've never, ever, ever got so many messages. <laughs> I know. I as know. when a fucking dude cross the finish line as Marvin Musgrove. You know what's insane is is if a parent asked me about if their son or daughter should wear a neck brace, I'd say it's their decision. Mm. I'd never go on record because that's a big thing, right? Yeah. Like I, I just it is pretty charged, eh? It's a char. It's a it's a pretty. It's like a loaded gun. Yes. Right for the person giving the feedback, right? Which, sorry to cut you off. We'll pick up right where you left off. But that makes what Ryan said even more <laughs> special, because like somebody's got to say it. I in terms I of just totally just to agree. bring. So somebody's got to say it. Not. In the respect of like because he's right, but because it should be a choice that you have like education on. And when Rhino says the things that he said and gives that uh, anecdotal evidence that he thinks, and then he says something about Marvin, Marvin goes out and does it. So like there is there is merit to what he's said, but what you said is right. It should be your choice, but. If just because it is a loaded gun and you bite your tongue, that's almost as bad as giving the wrong advice. I, no I, advice is I, as bad as the wrong I, advice sometimes. So I would give advice on it. And let me give you some history on the Liat and like the neck brace movement, right? So in, in 2007, my younger brother passed away. I came off, had a broken humerus from McGrath's um, little invitational he did where we all, oh, a bunch of us yeah. got with the ramps and stuff. Yeah, yeah. I crashed off like the smallest double there and just got weeded. And so I was coming back from that super jacked. My brother just passed away. And was, I was that from riding? No, from cancer. Oh, okay. Testicular cancer. So Cole passed away then in December and before Anaheim won. And like the week before Anaheim won, Zach Osborne and I were at the KTM test track. This was Zach's rookie year. And this South African guy had this like neck brace thing. Yeah. And I wasn't riding very good. Like I, I, I was sucking to be honest. And I was kind of scared. Yeah. My arm was jacked. Like I was in a bad place. And Zach tried the neck brace before me. And you know how Zach's so small yeah, and like, like hunched. Yeah, and I'm yeah. like not much better. But like I put this thing on. The guy was so rad to me. He kind of like lifted me up. I'm like, oh, I'll wear it. Yeah. So I wear it. I go to Anaheim 1. Doc Bodner, see, like, is we had a few bad. We had James Marshall, Tedesco, not long before that, all get paralyzed. There was a bunch of spinal cords. Tedesco footage. get paralyzed. I'm sorry, well. gosh, Fonseca. Fonseca. I apologize. Yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah. Ernesto Fonseca. Was, he, was Fonseca wearing a neck brace? No, though? no, no one was yeah. wearing neck braces at that time. Okay, right. And I, the irony of, yeah, like, of Fonseca is Donovan Mitchell. Most people don't know of him. Was an up and coming star. Signed with KTM in two in 1999 to ride 125 Supercross West. It was that day in the dirt, one of the first ones, crash, Fonseca landed on him. Not, not, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just because we're flag, irony. Yeah. Uh, Donovan's still alive to this day and he's quadriplegic. Yeah, right. One of the longest living uh, quads and he's super successful with eBay. Then you go to San Diego Supercross, James Marshall endos into a, into uh, one of this staircase to flat into a turn. Yeah. To, uh, um, Fonseca lands on him like a month later. Fuck. Fonseca breaks his neck, paralyzed. So there's a bunch of these things that are happening. Ricky James gets hurt, mm. right? There's all these things happening in the state of motocross within the small. No and the Liette Brace dude's son was a paraplegic. As I'm not well, sure. Right? I can't remember. I can't say or I, I don't know. Yeah. Okay. So I, I put it on just out of honestly a vulnerable state of my own. Yeah. Right. I go to Anaheim one doc Bodner brings me on stage and tells me, and I do a display about it. Right. Wow. Yeah. It was really crazy. Right. And, and, um, I'm wearing it and, and I feel like I'm comfortable with it, whatever. And then like next week I'm like, ah oh, man, this thing's kind of bulky. I take it off in that time. 
David Bailey puts out a YouTube video uh. where he's now in a bad way. David's been behind the scenes for a while dealing with bed sores and everything yeah. from when he rode Ricky James's bike. Ricky James, David Bailey is the, one of the most iconic racers yeah. in the world that got Isn't hurt. Isn't his nickname called that icon? Yeah, yeah. and he hadn't ridden a bike since his injury, so like 30 years. Yeah. Then Ricky James made the first like para, paraplegic paraplegic bike, yeah, right? With some yeah. throttle cage. Yeah. So everyone like kind of encouraged David, like, we want to see you on a bike again. Well, his insides didn't move around for that many years like that. Yeah. He right. ended up almost dying because of his insides. Wow. And he was on his deathbed essentially and heard about me wearing it. He went on Facebook or whatever he did and made a post saying that, like, why is Sleater the only one doing it? You guys all suck get on the floor with him and dance with him, put on a neck brace, right? This will save our, this will save the industry because he's in a vulnerable state. Yeah. yeah I was in a vulnerable yeah, state. Yeah, yeah. And then, then I wear it. Then Kevin Wyndham's like, dude, I, he's tail end of his career. He's like, I'll put it on. And then JG sees him put it on. Then they go out and podium and win the next race in San Diego. <sighs> so then what happens? <laughs> Liat yeah. just blows up and it's like well it's not hindering anyone everyone's wearing it and I'm not once again I'm not gonna I'm not gonna say it's good or bad it's yeah, your yeah. choice yeah I don't wear one now so you can you can make of that what you will yep and um it just was a it, our, I think the state of moto was in a vulnerable yeah. place and there was an answer possibly but I do will we'll say there wasn't the amount of research that should have been done yeah. We all were emotionally charged with our decision to wear the neck brace. And that, like, apart from dying, that's motocrosses, like, that's everybody's greatest fear. Absolutely. Is becoming power. Like, I even feel weird talking about it. You're 100%. just like, this is juju you don't want to put into the universe. Because it's too fuck. It's so gnarly. Like, it's probably the most real consequence we face in this sport. It's taking out so many of our best yep. dudes. So many just like average fucking Joes too. Absolutely. You know? But we don't talk about the football kids and the gridiron guys in oh, America. Yeah. Like there is things happening, but I think there was a, a uh, an amount of events happening in a short time with spinal cord injuries that we were all desperate. Yeah. The industry was desperate The right for an answer. Yeah. I don't fault Liat. Alpine star anyone for trying their best to come up with a fucking oh right but I think it was rushed to market based on emotion yeah and to see Marvin Muscan going back to the original topic he looks like a different rider crazy it, it, like instantly like, like, let's take the lap time out of it in the position yeah I'm like who hopped on Marvin's bike yeah like he looks he's better he's moving all over it dude and he's, Basha looked the same I completely agree with you so that's aesthetics, right? And that could be from confidence and that could be from whatever, but the proofs in the pudding when guys can ride around like, um, and, and yeah, I j it's just what it is. I think it's, we're going to, I, I think there's data that shows there's not probably like Dr. Bodner back in the day, Dr. Bodner, if you don't know, is the, the founder of the Astros, Astros Medical Unit, which is now the Alpine One Star. of the nicest people in the world on planet earth he is five foot four's greatest piece oh, of man right like god he's, he's a good dude and he donated his time for that many years he's an er doctor and now it's the alpine stars medical unit and um tom carson from from uh that was uh, asterisk is still part of it with yep. alpine star so um he basically said like they need to look at data over yeah. years and i don't know what the data has shown if spinal cord injuries are down or up or the same or what but he still wears a neck brace. I see him at the track. He's a rider. Yeah. Um. He's a little sh short, stocky guy. So, yeah, man. It's it's a, it's a it's from a top racing racer perspective. I mean, it's telling a story. Anderson's not wearing it. Bosch is not, not wearing, wearing it. it. Marvin's, Marvin's not, not wearing it. Who else is in the top? And people people said um this was one comment that people were saying is like, oh, RV won four titles with it. Dungey won four. So okay, that's that's fair, but my my caveat to that is like okay so they were all wearing it so like if there is any kind of um movement inhibition that that neck brace causes dungy and villapoto and you know what i mean all those guys like they were all in that era where pretty much everyone wore it so if there was any disadvantages then it's negligible if they're all wearing it yeah. stewie never wore it yeah 
I pretty, did he wear it at one? No, I don't think I don't, he ever I, wore I it. I think he, I know he did try it at one time and he took it off and went through it at the mechanic during practice. Going back to like, like it's now doing the opposite of what it did in the late thousand, like 2008, yeah. 2007, where if you weren't wearing it, like David Bailey called us out and I love David Bailey. I'm not saying it's a bad thing. I think yeah. it was a great thing. He did what Rhino did yeah, but two weeks rever- ago yeah. in reverse, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. Um, and it brought attention to safety and, mm. and, and, and things have evolved. Like Stuart had it on and then just unclipped it, flicked it off to Oscar. I think yeah, like, it was like it, peace, peace. This ain't yeah. working for me. Yeah. Um, Reedy wore it for a long time, right? Yeah. Like everyone yeah. started getting rid of it as it, bikes are getting faster. Technique evolves. Technique evolves. I mean, guys aren't even putting their leg out in ruts anymore because no. they don't have time to. Yeah. If you enjoyed this content, please like and subscribe. And to listen to the full three-hour podcast, search Gypsy Tales in your favorite podcast platform or click the link in the description below. Gypsy Gang.